top managers do face ethical issues, um, and they vary. Usually the socially conscious individual that has a concern for that community does face the issue of what to do when the production base or service base from which they originally operate is no longer a viable platform and they have to move. Now here I'm thinking of many of the Russian companies where the owner manager, who is often the chief executive, either bought the company when that individual was young, when you had the distribution of assets in Russia approximately 15 years ago, or worked their way up through the company and became the dominant shareholder. Now there, the link to community is a powerful ethical concern. And I cannot say that there is any easy way out of that. I do know with many of the owner-managers that we have come across, the link between themselves and their management, the people that they grew up with, the people that they hired, the workforce, is a very powerful link. And we know of one Russian company that is buying up steel companies in the USA, whose prime point of reference at the point of merger or acquisition is not the management of the company that they're purchasing, it is actually the mayor of the town and the trade unions. And they go to the trade unions and say, look, you know how inefficient your operation is, which many of the steel assets in the US are. You know how many jobs are going to be lost. How are we going together to make sure that only half of those jobs are lost? And you bring, they bring the trade unions on board into the negotiation so the union understands how much investment is going into the company and from that, how will they work together to make sure that investment works out for the owner shareholder? So we have certain ethical concerns around identity with people, identity with communities, making sure that people are, are no longer an asset, but they're a basic human resource that has rights and responsibilities. Um, we found other ethical concerns with many managers when it comes to corruption. Um, there are some that just say, will say, we will not allow that practice in our company, in the countries where that practice is common, and they suffer the price. Um, the other ethical concern is when the top managers know it's happening and try to make sure that the conversation never uh, comes to board level or to top team level. And often the CEO does not have the ethical concern, but somebody like the board secretary does. When people go to them and say, we must bring this to the attention of XYZ, and yet this person has been tasked with, on no account is anybody going to talk about this issue. So you have different levels of management who are challenged. And those challenges are not easy, especially when your boss is given a dictate that we do not have this problem and please make sure nobody talks about it. I suspect those managers who are particularly challenged are country managers who really see what their company is doing in that country. Uh, many of them are locals. Many of them are brought up in particular communities. Quite a few do not take on a corporate mantle and yet have to provide a corporate way of doing things in that country. And again, no easy way out of that. Um, to be honest with you, what most people do is just they buckle under moan about things uh, in the local tavernas or coffee houses and say to the corporation, everything is fine. Again, it's a very difficult issue because unless you have a very distinct philosophy and senior middle and middle management see that their top managers have taken a distinct stance and they're willing to bear the burden of responsibility of that stance, like it's costing us money, we're losing money, we're losing market share, you don't really then trust top management. Um, what would, should top management do? Well, at least bring it to the surface. Let's talk about it. But if you can imagine a history of mistrust, and if you then gave permission for some of those issues to be discussed, the great fear is what actually will leak to the press and media. And what will leak to the press and media from people who've got some sort of courage of speaking up, but never had that sort of corporate identity, is that they will then begin to say, um, we have known this for years. We were privately told not to speak about this for a number of years. So then corporate reputation is badly tarnished. So you're caught. 
you either have that strong philosophy, you've worked on it, you've been honest, you've made that culture as much a business culture as it is a social culture, or you face often unsolvable problems which you tend to deal with step by step, problem by problem. It's a, almost a patchwork quilt approach to dealing with uncomfortable ethics.